oh yeah, we're talking about the Switch Pro. But uh, hold your horses a bit because before I talk about it, because we've got a couple pages of stuff here to go over, uh, I need to remind you that we did a story the other day about uh, the former lead director, lead designer of Metro Prime 1, 2, and 3 and how he said Metro Prime 4 is unlikely and I said that he's wrong and all that. It doesn't matter, you know, my personal opinions on, on it. There is now stories coming out that he is being attacked by Metroid fans on his personal accounts that don't. We're better than that as a community, guys. Just because he has an opinion that it's unlikely the Metroid Prime Trilogy HD will ever happen, that doesn't give us the right to do personal attacks on his personal accounts and affect his actual life. I know this seems to happen every single time we criticize something someone says, uh, especially when it's something that we don't believe is true, but come on. Come on. Let's get into some fun news now instead. All right, folks, so again, just like my video yesterday, I will preface this by saying if you watched the Nintendo Prime podcast back on Wednesday, you should already know this information. That is, if you watched the entire show. Now, I know, again, that show was three hours long. I will link that show down in the description and probably in the pinned comment as well because it was a very good podcast that contained a ton of information, and I encourage you guys to tune in to our podcast this upcoming Wednesday. As you can tell, sometimes we break news on our podcast instead of doing separate videos because we want to have a much longer form conversation. In fact, sometimes new news comes up from our guests or other information that we're working with. And yeah, we'll split it off into its own videos later like we're doing now. But still, this is just something I want you guys to be aware of. So if you want to get the news even a little bit sooner, go check out the Nintendo Prime Podcast. All right, so... Let's get into this. All this information, again, comes from Samus Hunter 2. Again, at this point, you should know who Samus Hunter 2 is, but if this is the first time you've ever seen a video on my channel, just know that Samus Hunter 2 is a Twitter user who has gotten a bunch of information correct. I will link to her Twitter profile below uh, be, you know, in the sources section because this information comes from her. However, this information was provided to me through private DMs. So I can't actually link you to the DMs, uh, and I might show a screenshot of the DMs. I haven't decided yet here just to prove that they're there. Uh, but besides showing proof that the DMs exist, I'm just going to go through this information because this is very, very cool stuff about Switch Pro. Now, if you're hoping in this video to find out specs, not necessarily going to be finding that out. You're going to find more about features and what Nintendo plans to do uh, with the current base model and light model of Nintendo Switch because, believe it or not, the Pro model has implications on them as well and those models might be changing very, very soon. So, let's get into it. So, we were talking about all of her rumors and all her reports, the past reports, current, all that jazz that Samus Hunter has done uh, and we went over all of this on that podcast. But, uh, she unprompted, didn't even ask about a new Switch, brought up the new Switch console. So let's go through the conversation. So Samus Hunter says, Oh, I forgot to talk about the new console. Yes, I can confirm they are going to release a brand new Switch model, not a new generation, but a Pro model. So again, Samus Hunter has been right on so much stuff. For some people, this is practically a reconfirmation of something many of us already believe is happening. All right. They are probably working on two revisions. Now, this is the first time we've heard this two revisions, a more expensive model, but with more features and better graphics. So this is the Pro, a model that just improves on the current Switch model, but with some features from the other, as was the case with the base Switch after the light was released with better battery life. So what happened when Switch Lite came out, in case you're lived under a rock and don't understand that there are different versions of the original Switch. Uh, they shrunk the die down, which created better battery life and enabled them to do the light. And they took that die and they threw it on the base model Switch with the bigger battery, which gave it more battery life. That's essentially the only change that happened. That's why we have the red box switches. Those are known as the V2 
2 switches, version 2 switches. So what they're saying is when the Pro comes out, it's going to be followed up, if not right away, soon after by a version 3 switch and a version 2 switch light, essentially. Those models would be replaced um, internally. The component They would look the same, but some of the components would be replaced internally. Some of the features might get adjusted as well. Hello, <clears throat> maybe Bluetooth? I'm just saying. All right. So then I responded and I said, ah, so that sounds like a V3 model that adds modern features. I don't know what those modern features might be. Maybe it's just a bigger screen, new Joy-Cons perhaps, then a Pro model with all the power. Awesome. That just made tonight's podcast even better. Know any details about those features? We already know about the OLED screens and such. And Samus Hunter responded and said, that's right. It's important for Nintendo to have a budget model light. A family model, which is the base model switch, and then an enthusiast model, the one that many call Pro on the market. If they can find compromises that allow you to have the features of the new models on the old ones while maintaining the same cost and price, they will, especially if it comes to the hardware components to standardize production. This aspect is important, so if you want to quote the exact words in some video, please do. Well, here's that video, Samus Hunter. So here's the thing. What first of all, this is the first time I've seen the models, you know, split up in this way. Now we always knew the light was like kind of like a budget switch, but calling the base model switch the family model, I've never I've never heard that term used before. So that's the family model, and the pro is the enthusiast model. If that's how Nintendo views it internally, I find that very interesting. Also, this talks about how Switch Pro is going to be more expensive than the base Switch. I feel like that should be expected. Now, if we look at the price difference between the light and the and the base Switch, that's a $100 price difference. I feel like there's going to be a $100 price difference then to the Switch Pro. So Switch Pro would be, well, what would that be, uh, two, $399, right? So you got 399, 299, and 199. Uh, it doesn't appear the light or the OG switch or the family model switch, I guess as it's called, uh, are going to change prices. They're just going to do a component swap, and then if there's certain features on the new model because of those components, maybe the Bluetooth stuff, maybe um, I I don't know. I don't know what features they're they're considering. Maybe a headphone jack on the Joy-Con or something. I, I have no clue. So whatever features they're considering adding, um, OLED panels, by the way, I assume they're going to drop those OLED panels down the Switch line. I don't think that's going to be just an enthusiast model thing because I feel like Nintendo can get a better deal at manufacturing uh, by unifying all that. They certainly can make Switches faster doing that. So uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. It's something we haven't talked about, how the Pro model could actually affect the down, you know, trickle down to the other models. But again, it happened with light, right? The light came out and it affected the base model switch. So why shouldn't we expect the Pro model to also affect those models and have version 3s? This does not mean if you own a Switch Lite or you own a launch switch or a version 2 switch that you need to buy a new switch. Okay? Let's be clear here. The Pro is not a new generation platform. Yes, we just got news from Nintendo, and if you missed that, link that down in the description as well, from Shatura Furukawa, that Nintendo is r and and heavily investing at the moment in their next platform. But, again, the Pro model is not the next platform. The Pro model is the next part of the family of systems that Nintendo talked about before Switch even came out. All right, so I responded to Samus Hunter, and I said, sure, I assume the Pro model is higher priced like 399 and the other models hold base prices do you know if the plans are this year next year uh and then samus hunter said well hey one aspect they are focusing on is greater connectivity as well as power to handle resolution and frame rate so obviously the power aspect we we've all speculated for a while that's the whole point of switch pro in addition to oled screens and other changes focusing on greater connectivity is something i find to be very interesting i'm not sure if that means um you know, better online services. Uh, we also just talked yesterday about the whole uh, new service that they might be launching for virtual console. So I feel like there's a lot of stuff you can infer through this over what that might be. You know, what might a you know, connectivity feature be that we're missing? I think messaging people, that would be fantastic to actually be able to do we haven't really been able to do that traditionally on nintendo systems uh I remember it was picto chat back in the day obviously we had meverse which was really really cool but direct dms isn't something nintendo has really supported that much uh but hey that would be greater connectivity with our friends and if we can get voice chat away from the phone back onto the system i think that would be a benefit to gamers as well again 
improving connectivity. Also, being able to seamlessly transition games from one switch to the next switch to the next switch when you're the main account on all those switches, I think would be nice as well. But, you know, we'll see what happens. So, um, I responded... And I said, I wonder if that has to do with Bluetooth stuff. Finally, might get that supported. Otherwise, not sure what they could do unless they are revamping Nintendo Online. And she responded and said, the Switch was planned, or the Switch Pro was planned for this fiscal year. So this year running you know, through March 2022. And it says, likely to release in late 2021 but it could be delayed to early 2022. It is necessary to see if they will find problems in production given the scarcity of some components. Also, I don't expect any announcement at E3. The plans were about the announcement in the summertime after they presented games that will support it at launch, which those games will be presented during E3. So what's interesting is um, th this almost lines up with something Shintura Furukawa uh, just said because I heard about this stuff before the financial report came out. Uh, and Shatura Furukawa also mentioned, hey, 25.5 million switches. We don't know what part scarcity is going to be like. We know we just sold 29 million. If we can make more than 25.5 million, we will. We just aren't sure about part availability. Now, we heard other reports from Nikkei that Nintendo might be saying 25.5 million, but they're you know, actually going to be producing 30 million units. So they expect to sell 25.5, but they're going to manufacture 30. And some of those manufactured units will indeed be the Switch Pro. Uh, and here you kind of see the same thing where, hey, Nintendo might be playing a wait and see approach where the internal plans are to release this holiday, but they got to see how production goes once it's fully ramped up and make sure they don't run into a scarcity of parts. That leads them to delaying it a couple months so they can have more units available at launch. There's nothing you're going to be able to do about scalpers, guys. Scalpers are at launch of every product, even before the pandemic. It's just, yeah. Nintendo is trying to make sure they have at least their targeted units for launch that they think they need uh, for this holiday. And what I find interesting as well is, one, you're not going to get an unveil at E3, which I, if, you, if you look at Switch Lite, they didn't unveil at E3 either. They unveiled that later in the summer, like literally at the end of summer and then released it a couple of months later. I expect a very similar strategy here because they're not going to want to make people not buy Switch for the next five months. Oh, hey guys, Switch Pro is coming this holiday. Yeah, so just kill Switch sales for the next few months. Nintendo's not going to do that. They're not stupid. They know that when you announce a new model, you need to announce it close to its release. That way you don't affect sales of Switch today. You could say maybe that's a little shady if they know this model's in the works. Why wouldn't they do that? Make people wait. It is what it is. That's just business 101. Uh, and yeah, it, Nintendo wanting to wait also until they have the games revealed that are going to be there at launch. I find it to be interesting because the games are obviously going to be on the normal Switch as well. I think the strategy is you show off Breath of the Wild 2. You show off any other games that you have planned uh, coming out at the end of this year. And you show them off running on the normal Switch. That way, when you announce this Switch that supposedly can output at 4K and OLED panel, that you could show, hey, look, remember this game we showed off during E3? Remember how it looked like this and it ran like this? Yeah, now that game, Breath of the Wild 2, now it's upscaled to ba bam 4K, runs at native 1080p handheld or something. Oh, and by the way, 60F. PS, doubling the frame rate. Oh, and maybe we threw in some anti-aliasing to make it look even better. See, that's the thing. It's possible that Nintendo could have these all these big, amazing games and be like, hey, you can still get these on your Switch, but hey, this is why an enthusiast, this is why an enthusiast would want to spend $400 this holiday on this so you could play all these amazing games, but just slightly better. Although I would say I would argue an increase from 30 FPS to 60 FPS is more than a slight improvement. Also, being able to go from like running at 900p or 720p um, and being able to actually run at 1080p with a nice 4K upscale, I would argue that's a pretty big improvement. But you know, to the eye of the beholder, there not everyone cares about that stuff. People are perfectly fine with 30 FPS on a lot of games. So people are perfectly fine playing games at 720p or under on handheld sometimes. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. All I know is this is really exciting stuff from Samus Hunter 2. Uh, it's a different approach to talking about Switch Pro compared to other. Other rumors are always focused on, oh yeah, they're, they're, they're producing units at manufacturing. They're adding OLED panels. It's going to output 4K. It's going to have DLSS. These are all like spec related things where Samus Hunter is talking about the philosophy 
And you want to know why Samus Hunter talks about the philosophy? Because if you haven't noticed, the track record of Samus Hunter 2 is that a lot of the stuff she sees has to do with how a game is being marketed to the public. And that marketing, Nintendo doesn't focus on specs in marketing. You're not going to hear about how many CPUs and how much RAM it has. and store. Nintendo doesn't do that. They didn't do that with the, the last two Switches. Why would they do it with this one? But they will focus on saying, hey, it's the same games but better. It's for enthusiasts. It doesn't replace the current models. It's just an option on the market. A family model, an enthusiast model, a budget model. These are the kind of terms Nintendo would use in a marketing way. So this is really interesting to me. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. Also, folks, hey, I know you might have already tuned out the moment I said that, but we do have an amazing show happening at E3 2021. Four straight days, over 12 hours of streams each day we have three thousand five hundred dollars plus in stuff we're giving away and that giveaway list grows every single day we have over a thousand dollars of our own money committed towards that giveaway for consoles and pro controllers games accessories collectibles we got a bunch of collectibles i'm excited to show to you guys um and and you know give away we have partnered with several game companies and game studios uh we partnered with um you know accessory makers this is going to be awesome we have over 300 people that are going to end up winning something during e3 and who knows maybe that list grows to 400 or 500 people and yeah you can win this stuff by entering free giveaways we're also going to have some competitions where you can beat me in smash bros during e3 and win prizes it's going to be a whole lot of fun you're going to want to tune in we have an amazing two-hour pre-show each and every single day of e3 i'm going to be pretty exhausted but i do it for you guys uh i can't wait and I'll catch you guys in the next video.